One of the animals missing from my trip to the aquarium was the whale. Well, they don't exactly fit by the snack bar. But I did find this film from a researcher, Monica Zani. She's one of the best whale watchers in the world. She's seen pretty much everything whales do. It seemed like a normal day, and I, I spotted something out the left side of the window and asked the pilot, you know, I said, hey, I think I got something out there at about 9 o'clock. Let's break. It's about a mile away. And we were all a little silent. I think we all saw the same thing. I know I saw in this single right whale, and she was thrashing around. She was rolling. And every time she'd roll, there'd almost be like this plume of blood that would come up to the surface. And so instantly, my first thought, unfortunately, was that something bad had happened. Uh, OK, we've got a whale in trouble. Where is this going? Hold on, Sam. Before you watch the end, you have to get a little more info on what this whale was up to. Nice, Paul. Love the dramatic tension. Thank you. So on the globe, we have this whale who is following this twisty path. Actually, the whale is looking for food. They eat a very specific species of zooplankton called a Calanus copepod. These little guys are smaller than a grain of rice. So they're like 50 billion times smaller than the whales that eat them. But right whales eat a lot of copepods, which give them energy for a long migration and other essential activities. So check out what Monica found next to this thrashing whale. And then there was no more rolling on her side, no more thrashing, no more crazy white water, no more blood. And we just saw another shape, essentially. And then as soon as we saw it come up and mom push it up, we knew it was, it was a calf. This is the first birthing of a right whale ever documented. Nice. And brought to you by millions of copepods. But if mama whale can't find food, then she can't give birth. And that brings us back to the heat-trapping blanket. You see, water temperature differences actually create ocean currents. Cold, salty water from the north is more dense and glides under the warmer water from the south. It's called the Great Ocean Conveyor. And food collects where these water masses meet, kind of like at a cloverleaf on a highway where traffic can get congested. But with more blanket, the transit system gets out of sync. It's like the highway is under construction and the clover leaves are moving to different locations every year. So warm oceans mean copepods are no longer clustering where the whales expect to find them. So the whales have to spend more time looking for food. Or even eating less food, which makes mating more difficult, which means less whales, and that impacts the entire ocean circle of life. But if we slow down this process of change by lowering our carbon output, then we give the whales a chance to get back on track. Get out of the way, Carmen! Ah!